Hey everybody, tonight's video is called God's Power Shown in Creatures, and tonight we continue our pass-through study as we're coming to a wrap-up here in the book of Job shortly, where we're going to be looking tonight at God, Job, and this thing called the Leviathan. And you probably might have remembered the term Leviathan, because we talked about it briefly back in chapter 3 when it's mentioned one of the other four times in Job 3.7. But uh, Job 41, verse 1 through 7, it says, Can you draw out the Leviathan with a hook or snare his tongue with a line which you lower? Can you put a reed through his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? Will you? he make many supplications to you? Will he speak softly to you? Will he make a covenant with you? Will you take him as a servant forever? Will you play with him as a bird, or will you leash him with, for your maidens? Will your companions make a banquet of him? Will they apportion him among merchants? Can you fail his skin with harpoons, or his head with fishing spears? So, Leviathan appears here and four other times across the Old Testament, such as Job chapter 3, verse 8. Psalm 74, verse 14, Psalm 104, 26, and Isaiah 27, verse 1. And in each occurrence, Leviathan refers to some mighty creature who can overwhelm man, but has no power over God. It has no match to God. And Leviathan is another creature similar to the land version, Bahamoth, but whereas Bahamoth is a beast of the land, Leviathan comes from the sea. And since this creature lives in the sea among ships, it has some form, it was some form as a sea monster, possibly an ancient dinosaur. And some believe, though, it was a crocodile which had a scaly hide, terrible teeth, and speed in the water. I don't agree that it's a crocodile because crocodiles are not sea creatures, and clearly this one was. And some thought maybe it was a killer whale or a great white shark. Or maybe today, some might call it the Megathon, Megathon or whatever that movie's called with that big shark. Because this is the ultimate killer beast over all the other proud beast. But, you know, to me it was some kind of sea-going dinosaur. And the implements available to mankind are insufficient for capturing Leviathan. It is so fierce that it cannot be tamed as a pet, and no one is able to talk with one, we see. And God asked Job if the monstrous creature need for any reason to come to term with Job, if Job was able to control this sea monster. And Leviathan means twist in one. And God uses Leviathan's description to basically bring Job to a humbling spot that he is powerless over creation. In verse 8 through 11, it says, Lay your hand on him, remember the battle, never do it again. Indeed, any hope of overcoming him is false. Shall one not be overwhelmed at the sight of him? No one is so fierce that he would dare to stir him up. Who then is able to stand against me? Who has preceded me that I should pay him? Everything under heaven is mine. So God created and God controls massive creatures, so his might is far greater than theirs. And Job couldn't contend with Leviathan. How, could, how then could he contend with God or stand against God? God is the one who created and masters Leviathan. And this was a, another effective way of setting Job in his proper place before God. And God didn't need to buy anything. God already owned it all. And that is what we should take out of it. In verse 12 through 17, I will not conceal his limbs, his mighty power, or his graceful proportions. Who can remove his outer coat? Who can approach him with a double brittle? Who can open the doors? of his face, with his terrible teeth all around. His rows of scales are his pride, shut up tightly as with a sail. One who is so near another 
that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together and cannot be parted. So God describes in greater detail the might and the glory of the Leviathan. In verse 18 through 22, 21, His sneeze and flash forth light, and his eyes are like, like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lights. Sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke goes out of his nostrils. As from a boiling pot and burning rushes, his breath kindles coals, and set a flame goes out of his a uh, and a flame goes out of his mouth. So it is very unlikely that Leviathan is some mythical dragon that breathes fire. It's more likely using here a hyperbole portrayal of a crocodile emerging from water. In uh, verse 22 through 34, to finish the chapter, it says, Strength dwells in his neck, and sorrow dances before him. The folds of his flesh are joined together. They are firm on him and cannot be moved. His heart is as hard as stone, even as hard as the lower millstone. When he raises himself up, the mighty are afraid. Because of his crashings, they are beside themselves. Though the sword reaches him, it cannot avail nor does spare dart or javelin. He, re he regards iron as straw and bronze as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones become like stubble to him. Darts are regarded as straw. He laughs at the threats of the javelins. He underlines, he undersides are like sharp potsherds. He spreads points marked in the mire. He makes the deep boil like a pot. He makes the sea like a pot of ointment. He leaves a shining wake between behind him. One would think the deep had white hair. On earth there is nothing like him, which is made without fear. He beholds every high thing. He is king over all the children of pride. So in this last extended description of Leviathan, God speaks in terms that are more closely connected to the concept of Leviathan with Satan. And it, should, it could be said of Satan and Leviathan that they are strong, cruel, entertained by sorrow, strongly defended, hard at heart, and unsympathetic. Uh, unsy uh, unsympathetic. Because the mighty to fear and filled with pride. And God ends his words to Job without ever telling him the story behind the story here. And Job didn't know the whole story about the contest that the book of Job opens with, with the interaction between God and Satan taking place, the contest. And God did tell him of the great victory over Leviathan and Satan, giving Job assurance for the past, present, and future. So to wrap up today's video, nice and short video today, we look tonight at mankind being helpless against Leviathan. And that is why we need to always remember that God is bigger over us. There are things that can dominate us. There's wildlife that can absolutely destroy us. I mean, mess with an elephant and, you know, find out, uh, you know, try that, you know, with an elephant. But God has complete power over the biggest creatures that we know of. And Leviathan is thought of as Satan, as Satan is often represented as a dragon or a serpent in Genesis 3 and the book of Revelation chapter 12 and 13. In verse 8 through 11, it shows if mankind couldn't overpower Leviathan, it can't hope to overpower God. In uh, Romans 11.35... Eleven thirty-five Romans eleven thirty-five, or who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him. So Paul quoted verse eleven here from Job forty-one, as he proclaims that God owns all things, and we see in the bottom of the chapter the description of the Leviathan, as verses twelve and seventeen speaks of 
his limbs in the slain of Leviathan. And verse 18 through 21 covers fearful emergation from Leviathan. And we see that the chapter ends at the might of Leviathan. And that's going to wrap up today's study. We'll see you next as we are going to close out our study through the book of Job tomorrow. And we'll be looking at Job's repentance and the restoration of Job. So as I mentioned from the very start of the studies back right around Thanksgiving when we started through now, you kind of want to almost skip a great portion of Job because the first few chapters are very, you know, they make you uncomfortable. But, you know, the, the story is going to end with a positivity. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. So I hope you have a great weekend up ahead. God bless.